this is Julia at home and I'm Julia. Today I'm going to be talking about using Montessori materials and techniques with your toddler. I love Montessori materials. Um, I, I went to a Montessori school when I was young, as did all of my siblings. My sister is a uh, Montessori teacher. My parents have been on the boards of Montessori school, so it's really in my family. Um, when I thought about my daughter's education when she was a baby, this is actually one of the things that led me to homeschooling because I wanted to give her the benefit of these um, Montessori lessons and materials, but there were two obstacles. One is the price of Montessori schools. It, the price of private school in general was just more um, than I wanted, than I, we could pay. Um, it was basically a trade-off. You know, I'd have to take um, a job where I wouldn't see her as much. Um, and we were fortunate to be able to make the decision that not everybody can make that I would stay home and um, with the kids and we live off one income, but that means no private school. So um, it occurred to me that I could homeschool her and my um, parents were very generous with gifts. I kept asking for Montessori materials for gifts and then I did a couple big purchases. Um, but we've been able to do Montessori at home, which has been fantastic. Now, um, a lot of the things I'm talking about in this video for toddlers are not actually um, solely Montessori materials. You can use a lot of things from around your house, although it's great to have some smaller items. But again, it doesn't have to be just Montessori specific materials. There are some sensorial materials that are Montessori specific that I will mention, but a lot of those don't get used until the children are three, um, which is when they start the primary cycle. The Montessori primary cycle is three years old to six years old. So I'm talking about um, things that you can do with your children before then. So really about 18 months to three years, um, depending on the child's development. So um, obviously different children develop at different pace. Um, and so you want to really follow the child. That's one of the core tenets of Montessori is follow the child um, in where they are developmentally and what they seem ready for. And then also, um, where they, I mean, there's a big difference between 18 year old, 18 year old, an 18 month old and a three year old in terms of what they can do. So keep that in mind when I'm telling you about the activities, that there's some that are going to be better for 18 month old and some that are going to be better. But again, this, um, I'm just covering the broad toddler range and sharing with you what I've done with, um, my two kids so far and what I plan on doing with my future kids. So there are, um, Bas three basic categories that I'm going to lump these activities into for toddlers. The first one is practical life activities. Now these, um, first I'm going to talk about the more traditional practical life activities that you would find in a Montessori a toddler or primary classroom. And these involve a lot of transferring activities. So um, scooping, uh, pouring dry items, which would then later lead to pouring um, liquids like water. Um, using just hand transfers or using tongs to transfers or a baster to transfer water with um, or an eyedropper which is let me tell you quite challenging for little hands. Um, spooning is another really good one. Obviously with um, all of these there's small parts involved so if you have a young child that sticks everything in their mouth you're going to want to be aware of that. And even as they get older, um, this is something that I would sit with or near my children and observe them as they were doing um, so that they weren't sticking things in their mouths or hiding things places because we really also want to instill in them the idea that these are their special materials for their work and that um, they want to, we want to teach them to treat them with respect. Now, spills do happen you um which is a great opportunity to teach them to sweep up or um i would give them a sponge with water activities so they could clean it up with the sponge um, and they also do that in montessori classrooms you'll see they'll have a tray and the children will take the entire tray off the shelf and bring it to their workspace and then do the activity keep it all on the tray 
and bring it back to the shelf. So again, they're toddlers. They're not gonna do this perfectly. They're gonna need to be reminded probably every time. You might have a child who just really likes order, or you know, that, that they are really good about remembering to bring it back. But um, in my experience thus far, um, I've had one that's a little bit better about it than the other, but um, they've both needed a lot of reminding in that. Oh, one escaped. Try one more time. practical life activities that aren't the traditional kind you would see on a tray. And these are things like getting dressed, putting your pants on, um, going to the bathroom, washing your hands, um, things like that that again you would do around the house. Um, and those are all part of your curriculum. So it might be a good idea if you are at home with your toddler, even if they go to a preschool, to maybe target one of those at a time. Be like, okay, we're going to really focus on washing hands and you come up with a procedure for them that's simple, simple steps for them to do. You explain it to them, you demonstrate it to them, and then you have them do it and you, you consistently help them with that. And then once they seem to have that one pretty well and you keep reminding them of that too, you might add blowing their nose. <laughs> um, so things like that are great to add in under practical. Life. The second category I'm gonna talk about is sensorial. This is perfect for toddlers because they are such sensory beings. I mean, they're constantly seeking sensory input to learn about their world. So um, some great things to do with toddlers are sorting activities. You can sort by color, you can sort by shape, you can sort by size. I'm sure you can think of other things to sort by that I haven't thought of, um, but, but I've done this with my children and um, it can be fun and you can actually do it just as you're about, like out and about as well. Um, you can have them pointing out differences. So that's really helping them with their visual um, sense, right? Seeing that this is bigger than this or telling the different colors. Um, you can use sound, sound cylinders or make your own, which is what I've done. Um, when my children were younger, I found at the dollar store, um, you know, well, at Easter time is perfect. You get all those little plastic eggs or I even found at Valentine's like little tiny box, plastic boxes that were shaped like hearts. And I put different things inside where there was two of each. And then I taped the sides up good with packing tape so they wouldn't come up. And um, my child had to shake them all and try to match the ones that had matching um matching sounds. And if you want to do it really simple, you could just do ones that make sound and ones that don't make sound. Um, but I found it fun. I think I put, you know, beads versus card, uh, corn kernels versus um, pom-poms, which don't make much of a sound, but you can kind of feel them. Um, versus like uh, beans, I think, dried beans. But I'm sure you can think of other things to put in as well and have fun with it. Oh, if you can find jingle bells, that's a really good one to put in there. Um, so sound cylinders, and as they get older in the primary cycle, there are um, traditional sound cylinders. And I just, I didn't even bother to purchase those. I just made my own. Um, then as your children get older, more towards the, two, between two and three, there are some of the um, formal sensorial materials that I like to introduce a little bit earlier. It's worked with both my kids. Um, so and those are the cylinder blocks and the pink tower. And I will try to insert pictures or video of what I have of those in here. The cylinder blocks are basically, um, they're blocks, 
and they have uh, a series of 10 cylinders that vary by width, by height, or both. Um, and it, it's the kids are practicing their visual sense again, taking them all out and then putting them all back in the appropriate hole. Um, so I, I really enjoy them. I find them really calming to do that lesson and I found that my kids um, have enjoyed it too and can do that a little younger than three, usually two and a half. Um, they've been ready. But again, follow the developmental level of your child and each child is going to be a little bit different. Um, and then there's the pink tower, which are um, 10 cubes. I think I've talked about this before, that they stack in order. And um, <laughs> this can be tricky with toddlers. I heard that Maria Montessori originally made this for toddlers, but they kept knocking it down. So if your child is just gonna knock it down, then I would wait, um, which is what I ended up having to do with my son. My daughter was able to start with that material and enjoyed it around the age of two, actually. Um, but my son just really wanted to kind of be silly and knock it down. He's really into building now and he does it, he does, I waited until he was closer to three or a little bit after three to reintroduce it and that worked better for him. So again, it's going to depend on the child and I am planning on doing kind of an overview as well as more specific in depth on um, how we use these specific Montessori sensor sensorial materials in its own video because um, if I tried to incorporate all of those in this one, It'd be super long. Where is the frog? Green. On the green. What else is there? That's a ladybug. On the, what color? What color is that? Red. What is that? Banana, good job. What? It is yellow. Beads. The beads are? Are they blue? Purple. Okay. This is a circle. Blue circle. This is a triangle. This is a square. It is a red square. You're right. Square, triangle, circle. Blue. Blue. Can you take out the triangle? That's the circle. Can you put the circle back? Thank you. Where's the triangle, Tina? There's the triangle. Can you take out the square? There's the square. Can you take out the circle? There you go. Are you looking for the smallest? Is that the smallest? Okay, okay try it. That's the smallest? Which one's smaller? Oh, uh oh, it looks like it fit. Yeah. Yeah, okay, keep going. category is language. Now, if you're watching this, then I'm pretty confident that you're already talking to your child, that you're probably reading to them and maybe even singing with them. And that's really all you need to do. That's how children learn language. That's how they learn vocabulary and sentence structure. Just keep talking to them and with them and listening to them and their ideas. And um, their language and vocabulary skills will grow without you having to do anything else. However, if you want to do something more direct and purposeful, just for a little while, not, not, don't make this a really long lesson, but just a little bit, you know, maybe every day, a couple of days a week, Montessori does have some ideas. 
So the first is sound objects. So as as we move into the reading, learning to read sequence, the first step is hearing sounds. Now, you might start this when your child is still a toddler, as um, my daughter was very much ready. Um, my son probably started a little bit before three, but he had a speech delay, so I really held off working with him on the specific sounds, um, sound games. And again, I am planning a video on the um, Montessori reading sequence that I follow. So um, I'll go into more detail on that later. But before we started that, I would introduce them to the sound objects that I have. Now I have them in a little box. I have organized them by um, sound. I have it alphabetically, um, but it's supposed to be phonetic sound. And, um, and then I would just take out one of those boxes at a time and teach them the names of those objects so that when we got to doing the sound game, they already knew what they were. So, um, for example, if I wanted to pull out, um, you know, mm, might have mouse and mat and moose and things like that that start with the sound mm. Um, and we would just talk about that and we would probably practice making the sound mm. These were also great to use for my son's speech delay um, as we could target certain sounds that he was having trouble with and just have him practice that sound over and over again. Um, so if that is something, if your child does struggle with a sound, and my son d does still struggle with a few that we go back over again, even though we've moved farther ahead in the sequence, um, it's really, it's really a helpful technique and children love little objects. There's just something about them that they love. Um, so that's one idea. Montessori also has what are called classified cards. Now, um, these are cards where there's, there's, it's pictures basically at this age. I have sets that I made where it's pictures and they're in categories. I should go back. Pictures within a category. So one might be vehicles. We have one of vehicles with pictures of different kinds of vehicles. And we'll go and we'll talk about what, what each vehicle is and what's in the picture. Um, so we're learning vocabulary and we're talking about things. Um, I also have farm, I have lots of animal ones. I have farm animals and woodland animals and African animals. Um, and um, I even have ones for color where there's different things that are all one color so that we could do a color sort, which is kind of a combination of language and sensorial. Uh, I have them in three part card sets one part that's just the picture, one part that's just the word, or the name of that, that thing that's in the picture, and one that has the picture with the word. Um, and then when they're learning to read, they can match the pictures and the words and check it against the one that has the picture and the word together. <laughs> um, I also use them for matching games, so I'll take the one with just the picture and the one with, just, with the picture and the word and flip them all upside down and mix them up and they'll have to match them. So that's another fun way to use the classified cards and we're talking as we go. So it's very much a language activity. Um, you could also do go together cards. Um, I know they have sets of those. I actually think I have some behind me. What goes together um, cards. Um, use repetitive words, rhyming, all things like that that you can do for fun. You could do them in the car. Um, and those will all add to your child's language development. You put the clock on your nose? <laughs> <gasps> there you go. There's the clock. Tyrion, where's the cow? Here. Are you being silly? <laughs> what is that? Cup. That's the cup? Yeah. You have the cup and the? Kettle. Kettle. You can see my cup and I'm going to into my cup. Oh, okay. Yes, that's how the kettle works. Okay. Oh, that's not Can funny. you put the crab on your knee? Where's the crab? It has a, it's a scary crab. It's a scary crab? It's a, a big pincher. With big pinchers. Oh my. It matches this one. It matches the icicles? Okay, yeah. put it next to the other icicles. There you go. And what the other one does? Well, let's find out which one you're going to do next. Mm -hmm. This one. Oh, I got the one. I got the second one. I got the. It 
one. What is it? I have put the others. I have, I, I say put the other heart. A horse pulling a sleigh? Yeah. Yeah? So I hope this is helpful. Um, there are just so many things, fun things you could do with your toddler. Um, and I'm just getting into the very technical Montessori um, inspired inspired things we've done. And of course we've done art and music and other things as well. And you can see some of my other videos to see some of the other things that we do. Um, but I just wanted to give you an idea of specifically what I use uh, for toddlers that is Montessori based. So if you have a Montessori toddler, let me know in the comments below what you like to do with them. If you like this video, click thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos about homeschooling and home and garden and pregnancy and baby updates, then please subscribe. Thank you. Talk to you later. Mm -hmm.